Hi, I'm Rob Holliday from UNC Chapel Hill News Services, and I'm joined now by Professor of Geological Sciences, Dr. Jonathan Lees. Dr. Lees, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. You have a personal connection to the Sendai region of Japan. Right. So yeah, I, I uh, I've been working with people uh, in the in the Department of uh, Geological Sciences there for some years now, and uh, in 2009 I spent part of my sabbatical there. I uh, worked with uh, researchers there on earthquakes and volcanoes. So what was it like for you when you first heard the news about this earthquake and tsunami, to have it happen in a place that you knew so well? Well, so I'm very concerned about my colleagues there, and uh, I should say that I don't know, right at this point, I still don't know how they are, and uh, my heart goes out to the people who are now suffering and dealing with the consequences of this disaster. Um, one of the things is, is that people in my position have a responsibility to respond to these uh, scientific uh, issues that come up, and uh, I assume that many of my colleagues are, if they have a way to do research, they're, they're studying these uh, tectonics and seismic events uh, very carefully. What are some of the aspects of your research uh, that you've been drawing on the most as this event has been unfolding over the past several days? Yeah, first of all, this is one of the largest events we've had in Japan uh, for the last century. So this is, a, this is a big deal in terms of just the magnitude of this. And the aftershock sequence is intense there are uh, tens of uh, magnitude uh, sixes and sevens and, and eights, and, uh, and so this is like lighting up these, the downgoing slab that's going underneath Japan. Um, but one of the things that I'm particularly interested in is um, the effect on the volcanoes. So we haven't heard much about that uh, in the news media or you know anywhere, and I still don't know what's going on. And so uh, this is an area of specialty of mine that I'd like to learn about. Certainly with, I mean, it's an, a disaster unlike few of the world has ever seen to have an earthquake, a tsunami, now a nuclear emergency. But what are the risks with the volcanoes? What are some of the potential things yeah, that could happen? This is the, we, we don't really know what would happen. So you can think of a volcano, it has magma underneath. The magma is hot, it's coming up towards the surface. It has gases in it. And now you're gonna take this fluid and shake it up. And the gases are just like a soda pop bottle. And the gases in there are pressurized now. And any small disturbance could cause an eruption. Uh, Mount Fuji is the most famous volcano in Japan. And we believe that it is ready for an eruption at this time. Uh, even before this event. And so this is a matter of great concern to Japanese. There, there are millions of people who live around the vicinity of, of Mount Fuji. Geographically, how does that relate to Sendai and to the Daiichi nuclear plant, to Tokyo? Right. Is it in the same yeah. general area? No, it's a little bit further south. Okay. So, so Mount Fuji would be just west of uh, Tokyo. And so it's not close to the, uh, to the nuclear plant at all. So if there was a disaster there, that would just magnify the suffering of Japanese because people are now escaping from the coast, from the, uh, from the east coast, escaping towards the west and the south. And if we had a, a volcanic disaster now, that would just be completely chaos, chaotic. Generally speaking, what does it take? Is this kind of event the kind of thing that is more very likely to trigger an eruption like that? I mean, is it sort of that delicate a balance and this could set it off? Well, we don't really, you know, we don't have all the research done on this. First of all, we don't have a lot of experience with magnitude uh, 9 earthquakes. Mm -hmm. And um, we don't really understand about volcanism and how it works and whether it, there are situations where we've had big earthquakes and volcanic eruptions afterwards. Uh, Japan has many volcanoes, not just Mount Fuji. And there are other ones that are uh, very active also. Mount Fuji is the most famous. But there are other ones in the north near uh, Sendai, actually. And uh, so as a volcanologist, I'm kind of very interested and curious to find out what is the effect. I don't think we'll know until we get enough cleanup in there and enough infrastructure in there so that we can start get data back. There's a nuclear emergency. There's been this flood from the tsunami. There's been the earthquake, of course. Uh, and you have mentioned the volcanic activity potential. But what are some of the other aspects of this story as it continues to unfold that concern you the most? Yeah. Well, one thing is, is that the, uh, <clears throat> first of all, I like to say that uh, Japanese have been preparing for large earthquakes for 
many decades. And <clears throat> even though this is a great disaster in terms of, probably mostly in terms of the tsunami and the nuclear power plant going down, from a seismological perspective, uh, we didn't experience any kind of collapse of building, large uh, skyscrapers and, and things like that. So that's good. However, many times, as I understand from engineers, these buildings were built to withstand a magnitude 8 earthquake. But after the magnitude 8 earthquake, we don't know if the structures are able to withstand a second magnitude 8 earthquake. So this is a concern for engineering to find out if these buildings that were designed to save humans, and they did, whether they will now be inhabitable or, or use, used in the future. And along those same lines, certainly the aftershock risk is high right now. When is there a time, is there a way that, uh, do aftershock risks go down after a while? Is it yes. the kind of thing where six months and the risk drops precipitously? Right. How right. does that go? So yes, uh, so immediately following a large earthquake, magnitude 9 earthquake, we expect to have say 10 magnitude 8s and hundreds of magnitude 7s and then thousands of magnitude 6s. And this is what we're experiencing now in, in you'll see these reports in the, in the news. Um, we expect that this will fall off over the, year, over the, the coming year although there, should, there will be activity associated with this event for several years down the line. But within the first year, we expect to have most of the larger aftershocks uh, pretty much over, I would expect. That doesn't mean you can't have another magnitude 7 or 8, um, you know, next year. We, we, these are all based on probability, not on prediction. A whole lot left to unfold, and Dr. Lee, thanks so much for joining us. It's my pleasure.